you know do it. have you ever dealt with a situation where you see someone who is ruining their life with a woman you know but they're like really in quote unquote love and just unwilling to listen like unwilling to change it where the woman is really trash you know not even like worth two cents but the guy still like spending his time with her and just wasting himself too many times to count what do you do do you help or do you like okay fuck off you you can do what you want i do my best to try to help initially but if they're not listening they're not going to listen um there are a thing called ask holes where they'll keep asking you for advice you give them the advice and then they do the exact opposite so this is going to happen unfortunately the thing is you sometimes need to let people go through a heartbreak to learn that lesson the hard way i could tell you so many times that your girl is a hoe and i've seen it in action but until you deal with that heartbreak you're not going to believe me the th- cuz you've never been heartbroken before right no nah, man i'm only the cause of heartbreak <laughs> right so you, uh, right right so you probably don't know like what the feeling of heartbreak is like it's a very sad feeling people can't eat they can't sleep they feel as though the pain is never going to go away and i remember in 2017 i was dating this girl everything was going well everything was going smooth uh, and then we had a breakup um uh, it just wasn't good right it was just a very mutual bad breakup um and i was sad for a long time i thought man this feeling once it going to go away cuz us as guys we want it to go away fast but it'll go away for a while then it'll come back it'll go away come back that's known as an emotional roller coaster so what happened hmm go on so um, what happened i was going to say something but go on so in 2024 this year what happened was i had this gopro which i didn't use since 2017 we got the gopro in 2017 to record different places me and that girl traveled i found the gopro i went through it and i started to see videos of this ex girl back then i thought oh man like this girl gave me like good feelings and stuff this time i'm watching it and i'm like i literally feel nothing so that's what i try to tell guys whenever you're going through a breakup right now it feels like such a tough thing but a couple of years will go by and this person is literally a stranger they generate zero feelings in you and that's when you when you have to actually go through that experience because if you just tell someone like hey one day you'll we'll get over this they don't buy it but when you actually let them go through the experience themselves then they understand it and they'll do their best to pass the lesson down in the future yeah i i agree with you so i haven't had like a break up break up where i'm like sad about it but i've gone through this phase where you know you're seeing a girl you kind of start liking her and that's the reason why you stop seeing her because you kind of start liking her and then you you have the feeling where you miss her for a while but eventually you get over it and it just passes away mm-hmm. i i know what you're talking about um yes. i will say that it's such a good insight that you should keep in mind that you should not date girls who have had too many breakups because they've gone through this process so many times that they're not afraid of it so you know they're very comfortable with like oh, fuck off i'm going to break up with you and that kind of makes her relationship weaker because she's more likely to leave than to actually work on a problem because mm-hmm. she knows that in 6 months she'll be fine. Yes, and it's way more difficult for guys to handle breakups than girls because girls have support systems set up. That's number 1. So they could talk about it with their girlfriends. And number 2 is that they're immediately getting attention from other guys. They know that she's back in the market. Where with guys they don't have support systems in terms of expressing themselves and even if they do most guys will just say go just get laid again problem solved so they can't That's ever good advice what well, is good advice but sometimes people do need to uh, like there's so much in love where it's difficult to just get laid and that's it it doesn't really solve the problem it just prolongs the solution um and the second thing is when you're a guy that just um, got out of a relationship girls aren't flooding your dms or anything or guys are flooding a girl's dms but for you it's not the case so you really need to pull yourself back up by yourself so um guys often deal with breakups in a very peculiar way i've seen it in action many times and these guys they can't believe that the breakup just happened 
and the girl is automatically getting with someone else. That's known as monkey branching. So, dude, you can sleep with so many girls if you realize the fact that girls are very easy to sleep with after they've had a breakup. They like Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, they go into the whole phase. It's like We're, they think that by sleeping with lots of guys they're like hurting the guy before, you know, the like, it, this must be very harmful to him. He must be very sad about it. Like, yeah, he must be very sad about it. Now come here, bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, that's when girls um they ruin themselves right after a breakup where guys will often do self-improvement where a lot of girls not all like a lot of girls they just have their whole face then and it, they get traumatized in the long run from that because they're thinking oh man i lost the perfect guy to so just have a lot of lays with these guys that don't even remember me and they start to question their self-worth so they think they're getting revenge but in reality they're digging their own grave yeah it's like i i am and i was talking we're talking about it and he gave me like a proper explanation for why he thinks that's the case and i agree with him um he says that in a very fucked up way right these girls think that he really cherish he used to really cherish me right so now when he when he realizes that i'm sleeping with other guys it's going to really hurt him you know it's like he's going to be very mad about it he's, he's going to feel very bad that um you know i'm doing it with other guys and not him um but realistically in the long run the guy is you know he's no longer in the picture so you're just you know taking poison yourself and expecting someone else to die from it if that makes sense yes absolutely and you know what's actually more hurtful let's say jim and mary break up right now if mary just starts sleeping around that will be somewhat hurtful to jim but you know what will be more hurtful if mary just keeps consistently hooking up with one guy tom that's going to hurt him more um from my experience where uh, if they see the girl is having like a, a whole face they'll just say oh man the girl is a slut anyways i dodged a bullet but if the girl is <laughs> yeah if the girl's just getting with yeah, one guy over and over then it's going to hurt him it's like oh man like she legitimately loves this other guy and then this guy will feel a certain type of way so the girls they think oh i'm just going to sleep with a bunch of guys cuz i'll hurt them more that way where guys don't get hurt by that they just think oh man this girl's disgusting i mean thank god i dodged a bullet hmm you know i've never actually been ev- involved with somebody after i like stopped seeing them simply because you know just get so busy like i got shit to do right i'm not going to sit and worry about what this other girl is doing and besides that i i would honestly recommend guys to date two three girls at the same time not just date one girl because when you date one person right you start falling in love with them or you know you start liking them as a person and then you miss their company so that's not what you're looking for you know if you're just trying to have fun so i would strongly recommend guys to date like at least two women i would recommend more if they have the time and energy and money but at least two three women at the same time simply because you know you will rotate these women you know let's say you're seeing like two girls but then one of them is going to go away or you know you stop seeing her for whatever reason then you replace her with someone else etc etc this way you never feel very bad about it you don't waste your time with this emotional nonsense and the game goes on yeah but you're talking about dating you're not talking about in a relationship are you uh yeah not not relationship i mean just like casual dating right right cuz what i'm talking about is right after a relationship where yeah in the talking stage dating stage you should be with different people but when you're in a relationship and you're committed to one person and that ends i notice different people act different ways where with guys i always say life will kick your ass plenty of times but the two things that will always be by your side are the weights and the uh, and journaling so if you could do those two after a very tough moment you'll ground yourself again and that's when a lot of guys get into self improvement because um they just want to build themselves back up or girls when they're newly single they're getting so much attention from men so they're thinking okay well now i guess it's a good time to have the whole face and then they have their girls who are currently going through whole phases saying yes girl come on do it it's worth it 
and so they'll do it. And I am and you are right, where they think they're getting back at the guy, but the guy is just losing more and more respect for her. You know, it's such a big setback. I, I, you hear about guys who date a girl for like four years, five years, and then break up. It's like it's a huge setback. It's such a big waste of time. Um, you know, because now that I'm married, right, I can see the value of having like a stable girl in the long run. It just takes out a lot of things. Like a lot of things are just like delegated away. Like back in the day, right, I used to waste so much time dating and what have you and now most of my needs are taken care of by one woman who i love and she loves me back and i can actually think about the future having kids etc so i can see the value in having a good woman by your side but it would be such a what's the word for such a big setback for a guy to lose a girl he's invested so many years into so it's very important before you get in a relationship, to be really, really sure about it. Because in the West, right, people don't think in the terms of empire. They're just like living on a day-to-day basis, eating what comes to them. Like they're, li- they're like animals. So, I mean, not just the West, everywhere. I'm not, I don't want to show around the West. Indians are not better. So mm-hmm. what I'm saying is that you need to be very intentional about it because five years is a lot of time to waste. It's like a long amount of time two ways and you have to really do all that stuff of you know trying to get a different girl who's like of similar quality or better again it's like a it's not it's a hassle right you can do it obviously but it's kind of a hassle and you should really make the good you should really make good decisions from the get-go and not just try to make bullshit work so what happens is at least what i see is a lot of people like they they start dating a girl for fun but then they they only date this one girl. They don't date like what I, they don't do what I say. They don't date like three girls at the same time. So they fall in love with this one girl, and then they make this relationship quote unquote serious or official or what have you. And even though they have the this is not like the right girl for them. It's not like the girl who's very compatible with them. Mm-hmm. But because they've fallen in love with this chick, they're now dating her seriously. And then five or six years down the line, they have a breakup. And you know, I, I could have I could have told you, like, dude, I could have told you you would have break on, broken up with her on day number three. But here you are. You dragged her out for five years. From outside, we can tell. From inside, these people, when you're in love, legit, dude, it changes your perspective it's a waste and of your time. perspective. It, you are correct. Don't sure. fall in love. Mm. Date five girls. Date, like, at least <laughs> two girls. At the same time. It's not that difficult. Yeah, dude. But it's like, it's really spooky how much it could change your perception. Because back to that girl in 2017 I was talking about, one day I had this Toastmaster speech coming up and I was really nervous because it was a competition. And right before I'm about to, you know, do the speech, this girl's calling me. So I pick up. It's like, what's up? And she's crying nonstop. She's like, no, no, something really bad happened. I was like, okay, what happened? I'm about to go speak. Like, what's the big deal? She's like, I, I, I have a big nose. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Wait, what? I was like, what the fuck are you saying right now? She's like, my nose is really big. I just saw it in the mirror. And she's over here blabbering away about how big her nose is. And legit, I could not see what the heck she was talking about. I'm like, okay, seriously, your nose is not big at all. Anyways, I got to get going. And I meant <laughs> I didn't think her nose, I thought her nose was perfectly fine. I got the GoPro recently. I was watching through it. And the first thing I thought was, this girl has a big nose. <laughs> <laughs> Love is blind, my friend. <laughs> Seven years later, dude, I'm thinking, wait a minute, man. She was right. I should have told her that day. Yeah, girl, your nose is pretty big. <laughs> I didn't see it at all. But now I Our see it. Is her, you know, <laughs> what's happened like seven years later? Hey, so yeah, remember that when you when you messaged me, your nose was big. I, I, I just saw the videos. You are kind of correct. Your nose is big. <laughs> That's going to make her day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but 
when you really care for someone, you don't see what other people are saying. So when other people are saying, hey, this is not the right person for you, you think that they're trying to tear your love apart while they're actually looking out for you. I think you got to have a few people you trust mm -hmm. and you know, take their advice seriously. Not everybody, but a few people you can trust with things and to trust them to be honest, you know, trust them to like tell you something in your best interests and listen to them because even yeah. kings cannot rule by themselves, right? You need to have good advisors. And all the time, bro, what happens is once you ended with the person, that's when your friends are like, yo, dude, I never liked her in the first place. Uh, you'll be like, well, why didn't you say that while I was actually dating her? Like, well, I didn't want to make you mad. So sometimes your close confidants know, but they don't say because they think you're going to get mad. Yeah, man, you got to see here. Here's the thing, right? You need to have an image where people know that if you tell them the truth, you won't get mad at them in the sense that. You know, if you if someone if you tell me something, okay, like her, you have like a shitty ass voice, like it's too high or something, and I get mad at you about it, then you will stop telling me things, because then you know that I can't handle it, and you know what do you have to gain out of doing this whole thing? But on the other hand, if I'm grateful, I'm like, hey, thank you so much for telling me, and like I really appreciate it, and yeah, okay, thank you. Like mostly people don't say, but you know, you're like a, you're actually trying to help me, so I. Very grateful for you, but then then you will actually tell me my flaws. You know, like oh, you you can improve this, you can improve that. So you gotta create that understanding and image that this guy does not get mad when he's told something that can be improved. Mm -hmm. And one thing, here's a little hack, a social skills hack. Whenever people are asking you for some advice and you're worried about hurting their feelings, you wanna ask the following question: Do you want the truth or do you want to sugarcoat it? So ah, when, you ask that question, good advice. when you ask that question, no one's going to say, I want you to sugarcoat it. They willingly are going to say, give me the truth. And since they're saying it, whatever you say, it could be really harsh. They know that they asked you for it. So you want to ask that question rather than just giving the harsh truth. Just say, do you want the real answer or do you want to sugarcoat it? And then you could give scathing advice if need be. True. So if someone came to me and was like, hey, man, I've been like doing coaching with, I don't know, my uh, my voice or something like that, something random. And they're like, what do you think? Do I sound better? And let's say I don't like it. Then I'd ask that question and then I give the response. That's such good advice. I'm going to use this. I, I never thought of it myself. Mm -hmm. But it helps. Correct, it that's helps. a good question. Yeah, mm. man. So it definitely helps. So it's something that you definitely want to keep in mind in the future. Um, but yeah, dude, I mean, if you anyone listening to this, if you guys know that one of your friends is with a toxic person, you got to be able to evaluate this person. If they don't listen to your advice, just understand when people are in love, they see things completely different than you do. So you may know what's right for them, but they're not going to listen no matter how much information you give them. Dude, some people are so hell-bent on destroying their own life that they just use love as an excuse. Like, even though they are, even though they themselves are aware that this is not going to end well, mm -hmm. you know, because you love them. I mean, women do this often, you know? And like, oh, I just did it because I loved him. I knew it was not a good idea. I'm like, ah. I mean, For sure, you know, dude. Your life. For sure, for do what sure. You want. But it's women are typically the victim of this. I've I've noticed this often, actually. For example, right? Like, since I have an accounting firm, I'll, sometimes I'll see something like you know, like the woman just sent like a whole bunch of money to some guy, and I'm like, why did you send all this money to this guy? Like, I, I you know, he's like a guy. He needed money. Like, so what? Like, I need money. Send me all your money. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't understand. I loved him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me like true. thrice i've like had i've had three clients three women who like sent a bunch of money to some guy they were seeing and they're like it's because i loved him i'm like that that's a so, so you never send someone money so you've never been in love before man i feel like you have a you're being macho um not the deep type of love like you know where you're really involved and I'm, I'm I'm not like a very what's the word for it? 
emotional no no i would not say not emotional i'm not a very um i'm not the type of person who becomes attached very quickly in the sense that i'm a very detached person i just don't you know i don't know what the right word for it is like i like having things but i can lose them and just be fine like it doesn't mm-hmm. bother me you know what i mean for example mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i really really like my car you know like i i like driving but like it kind of like got scratched up in like a small accident and i didn't get it fixed for like a long time because i'm like okay fine fuck it you know it's like a car who cares so that's kind of how i think of as people it's a trick like i don't care like i i wasn't very attached to it i was not very like so in the military they have the term asset you know they try to not get attached to people and they try to think of people as assets so he's an asset he's a liability so mm-hmm. i don't think of it in like of people as assets like that's not how i think of them but i typically i'm not very emotionally close with people i'm if someone is lost it doesn't bother me that much but i would not say that i'm not emotional at all because a friend of mine committed suicide a few months ago and i was sad about it for a while so i mean i was actually surprised how sad i was about it because you know i wasn't expecting it wait is like, that the I, guy that was in twitter oh uh, yeah uh, john anthony dang dude um were you guys close uh somewhat close we've talked often actually we used to talk regularly so yeah we were close but hadn't met him like in person so i was actually very surprised that i was that upset about it so i wouldn't say i'm i would not say i'm not emotional but i'm Did definitely uh you know interestingly the last time i cried was uh, very recently and i was not expecting to cry that day but i went to a war memorial and i was reading all these letters like the actual letters that were picked up from you know the soldiers in india after they died mm-hmm. and you know some of the you know like i told you right some of my friends like in my village like the guys i know they have family or sons or whoever killed by pakistanis and you could see the letters and the letters are things like you know hey mom congratulations on you know like the sister's name on having a baby etc i'll be coming home in a few weeks i'm at 17000 feet on this mountain etc etc and i was like the fuck man that, that really broke my heart mm you're so close no, no, no not even like just the ones that i was close with the, the, the i mean i didn't personally I mean, know any of these people, but mm-hmm. but it was just very distressing to me just to see that these guys had you know these letters were taken from their coats and wallets after they had been after they had died in the war like after they were killed by these terrorists mm-hmm. so it was very distressing to read i think the word is martyred i should not be using the word died um i apologize i mean the word is like martyred in the war um in in hindi it's called shaheed so uh, yeah you you know no, no, you're never supposed to say a shoulder dies here you're supposed to say they were martyred so yeah i i i i misspoke so but anyway after they were martyred uh, they took these letters from them and they have them in the war memorial and they were just like very I, i think i cried like for hours after reading them i was just very very upset about it dang do you cry in public or do you take some time to yourself Uh, at the memorial itself i was just sitting outside and crying for like a while and i just went away and like fuck it like why am i like i i was just not expecting to cry that day you know it was like a normal day and i was like okay i'm going to go home i'm going to go to my hotel i'm going to just going to sleep sleep this off <laughs> do, when you cry like do you feel as though it's a reset do you feel good uh, after not really man i think i just woke oh. up the next day i was feeling a little like you know when you cry a lot your eyes start to like oh what's the word for it i don't cry a lot often but my eyes were like very red the next day like not very you know you could see that this guy was not happy yesterday mhm mhm okay okay man that must have been a cry after a long time right cuz you mentioned you don't cry that often i don't cry that often like i I'm telling you this this was actually very surprising because I was not expecting to cry that day. It wasn't like a a death in the family or something, right? But I heard I heard you cry more when you grow up. Cry more when you grow up? Why? Yes. Um 
there was a reason why, but when people are becoming 50 to 60, and let's say there's a guy who's very stoic in his 20s, he wouldn't cry, he was very expressionless, but that same guy is 60 and he sees his grandchild being born, he'll cry. Um, where before, if you ask him, hey, do you think you'll ever cry if your grandchild is born? He's like, fuck no, man, I'm not going to cry because a kid is born. <laughs> but in 60s, it, he contextualizes his experiences differently and they cry more. You'll notice it with Jordan Peterson. This guy pretty much cries in every interview now. Um, he cries? He cries a lot, man. Like, if you watch his interviews, his voice always breaks. And some of them, it's just, like, straight up tearing up. You don't see those videos? Um, I've seen a couple of them, but I don't really follow him that much. I think a lot of the issues he talks about are just too, too foreign to me. Mm. where he's like talking about you know what to do if you're like very feeling weak I, I never feel weak like i'm not even like being too macho here i just don't i don't compute the same way as him i think where mm. a lot of guys compute in different ways like some guys really care about the flow state I'm like i don't give a fuck about the flow state i just wake up i do my work i go to sleep so i don't need to be in like a flow state for that some of the stuff he says is very well thought out where I never hear other people say it. Um, like the way that he breaks down the Bible, for example, he doesn't just break it down as a religious text. He breaks it down from the lens of psychology. And he talks about metaphysical structures within our subconscious mind. It's, it's very unique stuff. I do recommend that you don't just get obsessed with watching guys like Jordan Peterson because eventually you want to move to the next level. These guys are good for entertainment, making you think in a different way. But when you get too caught up in it, um, you just get you just spin around too much. One thing that I like about with Jordan Peterson is I think he mastered communication skills. Where he is um, a very good speaker, he knows how to put his thoughts into words very well, and he didn't just get like that. He's been doing lectures for so many years. So I mainly watch Jordan Peterson just to look at his communication style. Not that much for the content. <laughs> 